Right, so here we are just down the road from the Riffledown Centre. Uh, there's another video on that at the Pines Calix Conference Training and Event Centre, which is related by, you know, run by the same environmental trust, the Bay Trust. Uh, also, we're just on the coast right here. You can't quite see the sea yet, but it's over there. We'll see that in a minute. And Alistair is going to give us a quick tour around. Hi, Alistair, thanks Hi. very much. Pleasure. Um, Walk this way. Thank you. So we had uh, six acres of the Pines Garden. This was uh, historically an old barracks field. Uh, had uh, soldiers stationed here when we were ready for Napoleon to invade. Right, so Back quite, never did, quite so a long time ago. A long time ago. Uh, and then more recently, uh, in fact in the late 1960s, uh, this area was uh, about to be developed as, a, as housing. Okay. Uh, and it's through the dint of uh, and generosity imagination of my grandfather, Fred Cleary, who came in to not only prevent that, but actually create a garden for the public to enjoy. So it's open, been open to the public since 1971. Okay. And then in 19, sorry, 2005, we started building this building over here, the Calix, as you said, Pines Calix, within the Pines Garden. So following the theme of what we're, how we're working in the Bay Trust, by being close to nature, looking at means how we can reconnect with the natural wisdom of nature, nature's own, own designs, uh, and the gardens have been managed in an organic manner since 2001, then taking those simple thoughts and the processes into the built environment, that's how the building was conceived and, and designed and built. Great, let's go and have a look at them. So you've got a nice earth roof, I can see. Yes, so it's an intensive green roof. Um, we're adding some more earth on it at the moment. Uh, like any good project, things are always changing and evolving. Uh, in fact, as we sit, stand here, the next key step will be, and the last key step really on the building itself, is the introduction of some uh, PVT panels and other technologies which will re render the operation of the building and indeed this whole site to be, if you like, beyond zero carbon, to be self-sufficient in our own renewable energy. Great. <coughs> and then that little, that little piece there is the one we did earlier. So it's a little trial dome. Okay. Uh, which helped us uh, make sure that the methodologies, key construction methodologies of ram chalk and Catalan or Timbrel vaulting would work, yeah, whilst they worked in theory, on a drawing board, uh, we were able to establish... So it's ram chalk, practice. so that makes sense, you've got chalk so we're think, in Dover, yes, or nearby. We were, we were looking, again, cradle, but, cradle thinking being part of the core part of the design process, so looking at what resources we had here. Uh, we had the White Cliffs of Dover sitting over there, we were on a few hundred feet of chalk, and we had, had to excavate chalk to create the space, so we reused the chalk... Great, it's uh, funny because I'd never thought of rammed chalk. You hear of rammed earth all the time. Well, it is rammed earth, and our, our earth here is chalk, chalk. rather than clay. Yeah. Uh, and so the principles are exactly the same, uh, except that in many ways it's superior to clay, I'd say, both in terms of the colour, because it's light, so that helps the light in the building, uh, and also it's, there's much, uh, uh, it, it hardly con um, contracts at all when, when it's put in, so right, it's okay. much easier on the engineers work with. Great. So everything's been designed on the round, if you like emulating nature. Nature doesn't do rectangles on the whole. Uh, and so, in, in other words, flowing with the landscape. So the landscape is always to take precedence over the design rather than design being some great architectural statement. It's now we're just going to walk up here perhaps. And, uh, yeah, sure. So is this a, a, a herb garden, it looks like? Uh, it's partly herb and, and other plants and, and little vine, uh, got some vines up there. Just while we're walking past this, uh, this is actually just a sort of artistic intervention on top of a, an inlet for the earth tube. So that's drawing in air at low velocity through, just through here. Just, uh, and then... Right, I see through those gaps. Yeah. So there's a 30 metre long tube go right round the back of the building. So that draws in all our fresh air so that it's pre-cooled in summer and pre-warmed in winter. So it's constant 
12, 13 degrees centigrade. Right, so it looks like just a sculpture, but it's actually yeah. the ventilation system. Indeed. <laughs> well, highly the ventilation system. Yeah. But again, it's nature's ventilation system. So with a um, heat exchange unit on taking the heat out of the expelled air before it goes out, then that's a core part together with the thermal mass of the design, which means the building is designed to passive house standards. It doesn't need any additional heating right. in winter with common regular use. And you can see also here, I'll try and zoom in a little bit, there's the sea. So we're just looking over the sea, it's a very picturesque site. Facing northeast there to Belgium, round to your right, but you can't see it from here, are the White Cliffs of France. So you can see them a little higher up. Let's have a, uh, a look inside the building. Let's go through the main entrance. Yeah. So it's an earth shelter design, uh, common to most earth shelter buildings are obviously the, 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 the thermal mass which keeps it naturally warm in summer and cool in winter. However, uncommon with any other uh, shelter building that, that we're aware of is that we were able to go beyond the common uh, shelter building of being built out of a mass of concrete. And so concrete has, is very sparsely used on this design through the dint of the, all the walls being ram chalk and the roof structure with the Catalan vaulting. What is Catalan vaulting? I'll come and show you. Okay, great. Um, it's, in fact, if you look here, first of all, we turn to this little technical detail. It's a thin shell construction, same proportion as an eggshell. So this staircase is using the same method as, as the roof domes uh, themselves. Three layers of tiles. The first layer bonded in gypsum or plaster of Paris. That sets very quickly. So the, the tiler, the mason, holds the tile in place for 10 or 15 seconds, lets go, and then that's held, if you like, in space, and you go on to the next one. So it's self-supporting form work. Uh, and once the designs have been worked out, very elegant, very swift uh, and economic to use. So since the, if you like, rebirthing of Catalan vaulting on this project, it's been applied on a number of other projects around the world uh, and uh, we're, we're also looking at using it in a number of projects here in Kent. It's also used on... Is that what the titles are made from? So the tiles are, the, these tiles are obviously the methodology you can work with any standard type of tile. Uh, core to the philosophy of what, how we've uh, worked with credit principles, then these tiles are clay tiles where the clay is in fact waste clay from sand and gravel quarry, uh, and then these have been far locally about 50 miles away. And so you'll see the, the elegance of the, the simple round chalk walls. Uh, and the fact that they're nice and light and reflective and their marble-like appearance. And in fact, interestingly, I uh, understand from Bath University, who helped us with the Q tests and some technical aspects of this, uh, that the, the round chalk, maybe also true with clay, I don't know, but certainly round chalk uh, takes in, draws in carbon dioxide for a number of years after construction. So this, this is genuinely carbon negative in construction. In Amazing. fact, if you think about the energy involved in, in the actual the embodied energy in the construction of the walls themselves, then it's purely the uh, oil used in the dumper truck moving the, the chalk around uh, and, if you like, on the, the electricity on the compressor of the mechanical rammer, nothing else at all. Should we have a quick look upstairs? Yep. But yeah, I can see you can have lovely meetings in here or a feast or whatever you like. It's an all-round general purpose event space in a lovely location. And of course the design roof was creating actually the optimum healthy building. So a number of elements of that, obviously fresh air, which we talked about earlier on, but even more important in many ways is lighting. Not only maximising day lighting, but on a grey light day like today, ensuring that the artificial lighting is harmonious for us as... Right, so these uh, full-spectrum So this lights. is this a programmable virtual daylight lighting, um, and uh, there are quite a few technical aspects around that, but um, it's basically the nearest that we can get at the moment to, to natural daylight in, in an economic way for the workplace environment. Lovely. Uh, so I'll take you upstairs and there's another anti 
ante room and, and, and service areas and so on for the building. And here in the upper round wall, uh, again, we're in the lower round wall in terms of the roof dome. Uh, you'll see it's much brighter, a little higher up here. Uh, and then out in the terrace there are some little uh, earth ovens. Uh, and uh, this is commonly, as you can see, where uh, people are catered for and dining and so on. And uh, there's every kitchen over there. Excellent. Well, thanks very much for the tour, Anthony. Pleasure.